Hello and welcome to the podcast from the Huff Heinz Institute for Sports Medicine and Human Performance. I'm your host, Tim Lightfoot. Thank you for joining us today. And every week we work to bring someone who is an interesting personality, an interesting person in the world of sports medicine, human performance, and a variety of other sports-related topics. And this week certainly is no exception. We have a return guest this week from one of our earlier audio podcasts. Uh, welcome to the podcast, Tana. Thank you so this much. This is Miss Tana Birch, and I'll give the audience a full introduction to you in a, a little bit. Okay. Uh, I want to welcome, though, again, as I said, all everyone tuning in. Uh, again, we are very early on in our video podcasting days. If you're looking for the audio podcast, they're still out there. All 249 of our earlier episodes are out there, as there will be an audio-only version of this one as well. So look for it on our website at huffinesinstitute.org. Uh, again, to our guest today, uh, we have uh, Ms. Tana Burge with us today, who is the Assistant Athletic Director of Sports Performance at Texas A&M University. Um, she has a degree from Baylor in the past, has had a large amount of experience in the field um, uh, in the past. Uh, she has worked at the uh, University of North Carolina. She has worked at Clemson. She has worked at um, West Point. Um, and she is our Assistant Athletic Director for Sports Performance, which basically means Northwestern. that... Northwestern. At Northwestern, excuse Don't, me. Yeah, also Northwestern. Don't only one out. And cut that. <laughs> Go back. <laughs> oh, can't forget. Yes, and let's don't forget Northwestern in there. Um, and her role here at Texas A&M, she's basically director of, of strength and conditioning for all the sports except football. That's correct. And um, has personally overseen this past season women's basketball, yep. worked in the past with swimming and diving. And, and so, men's tennis. And men's tennis. Bit. We can't forget men's tennis. <laughs> and so Tana brings with her a wealth of experience in strength and conditioning. Now, we'll just start with the obvious question. Oh, and I will say that? that Tana was a guest on podcast number 186. So, um, and we've known her, I've known her for quite a while. So let's start with the obvious question. Um, and I think it's, unfortunate, it's an unfortunate stereotype of our world. Mm -hmm. But most people, when we talk about directors of strength and conditioning, they, they don't expect a woman. Nope. Most don't. Most don't. Uh, so, so let's talk about that. How, what has that been like? To be the uh, be a female and be director of sports and conditioning at a major university like this, have you had any resistance or? No, Excellent. and that's and that's been that's been the greatest part of it. I actually just um, was made aware that I'm the first ever um, female director hired here at Texas A&M for strength and conditioning, um, and. Um, I mean, from, from day one, when I was interviewing even, um, the three finalists were all women, mm. and which is wow. incredible, just um, sure. the forward-thinking nature of, um, of the administration, um, the athletics administration, and just looking at, you know, that's, that's a forward vision, um, not, not to say that there weren't qualified males, right. absolutely, but to say that the the three finalists for this position were all females, and um, and you know I was the fortunate one to be selected, and ever since then it's been um, just full steam ahead. We've had I've had such great support from the administration, from all of the coaches, from all of the staff, and you know we continue to evolve and grow. And mm -hmm. um, the the field of strength and conditioning is is exploding within the last you know five years. Um, and I just I think this is just an additional part of it where you're seeing um, some non-traditional moves being made and in leadership and in um, just how we're progressing forward. And that's what I was going to ask you. Do you see this trend actually happening around the country? This is not just a Texas A&M trend. This is happening around the country as well. It, it is. And there's, um, you know, there's there's discussion in a lot of different areas um, with strength conditioning. I mean, obviously, we have incredible coaches all over the country um, I mean, we've just this field, like I said, it's growing so much and you have people who have been in the field from the beginning mm -hmm. um, and um, who are now stepping into those leadership roles. You've got um, some young, fresh, um, very, very well educated individuals mm -hmm. who are stepping into those leadership roles um, with, you know, that are that are females in these director roles. And and part of that is the split in some of the departments where football has has mm. a staff and then right. Olympic sports has a staff. Um, obviously still collaborating, working together, but 
um, that does open up a little bit more opportunity um, from you know previous stereotypes or um, just ways that things have been done in the past. And so I just I think it it shows that the world of athletics is continuing to evolve and grow. I mean we have females who are coaching in the NFL now and NBA sure, right. and um, and other you know major league sporting environments. And so I think it's just it's the direction that. Um, you know, we've we've got really highly qualified individuals who happen to be females right. who are now being um, provided with opportunity to step into these roles and that they're leading really, really well right. um, and and fostering an environment where, you know, female student athletes are saying that, you know, there's more things possible than just right. more um, opportunities a, than a, they thought. a glass right. ceiling. So and I think we talked about this previously, but actually you haven't had any resistance from athletes either no. male athletes they've no. all been very accommodating yeah. and, and accepting and yeah. like, you're the strength and conditioning coach let's go yeah. Yeah. yeah and that's and and it goes to you know i'm i'm coming in from the beginning yeah. and you know i i share the standards the expectations and as as do all of our staff members yeah. um and it's you share standards and expectations and if you expect excellence out of people right they like they will rise up to that right. and so it's this understanding of you know i'm i'm not just a female coach coming in here to to instruct you on things i'm i'm a coach who wants the best for you and i want you to um to function in excellence and if that means that you hear it from a different um tone of voice <laughs> then then so be it and right. all of the athletes have been incredibly responsive and supportive and um and they they res they respond really really well yeah one, one of the wonderful things about sports and maybe part of his downfall it's all about performance mm -hmm. if you don't perform as a strength coach if your teams aren't better faster stronger yep. then you're not going it doesn't matter what yep. you are yeah so Hey, while we're at that, so this year was your first year with the women's basketball mm -hmm. team. Yeah. What a great year because Such they got made it year. to the Sweet yes. 16. What were your impressions of this year? Were oh, you surprised? Man. Did you work with basketball in the past, or is this the first time for that team in particular? I've, I have worked with women's mm. basketball in the past, not here mm -hmm. um, specifically, um, but I did at some of the other universities that I've worked with. Um, and every, every team is different. Mm -hmm. So everywhere that you go, even even from year to year, mm. teams are very different, sure. just with the different dynamic of personalities sure. yeah. and and um, and the age, not like the number age, but kind of the training age, the experience mm. age, uh, and so every team is a little bit different. So coming in, um, coming into the team this year, with here at Texas A and M, the the team is very different than it was even last year when. We went to the Sweet 16, and and so this year coming in, we had a lot of new faces, um, a lot of a lot of new people on the team, and so you know some people were like, oh, you've exceeded expectations. We were chosen to finish sixth in the SEC um, at in the preseason polls, and you know a lot of people didn't know what to expect out of us because right. we're very very young. I personally call us a teenage team because we don't have any freshmen, mm -hmm. and we have two seniors, um, had two seniors, and now a third graduate transfer. Um, so um, the rest are sophomores and juniors mm -hmm. and, and some transfers in. So I call us a teenage team. So still trying to develop our identity. And I think we did that really, really well throughout the season. And it was so exciting to be a part of seeing the, the growth, the development, um, and, and the maturity in this team from the beginning of the from this last summer sure. until now and they're still continuing to grow continuing to develop um and a credit to the staff and everybody that's involved um with the program i mean going to the sweet 16 it was incredible uh the the girls are incredible they they've really um they've shown me who they are mm -hmm. and and i can now like I feel like I now have a better idea of how to train them even better than we did last year, right. so that we can continue to move forward. Uh, one of the fun things is also you get to travel with the team. Yes. I know you guys went to Hawaii this year we did. at least once, and you went to all the other trips. So that's also one of the things I'm not sure people understand that strength and conditioning coaches do travel with the team mm -hmm. and all and have all that fun that goes along with that. Of course, yeah, it's great to travel and see, yeah. and it's it's great to see the dynamic when you're on the road because it is a little bit different. You're sure. you're together a lot, and to see the bonds that are developed in those 
away trips. Um, and even the connection that, that I as a, a member of the staff can develop with the team, um, you just, you get closer. And so that's always, that's always good because then you have a better understanding of what drives them. They have a better understanding of your purpose too. So I, let's expand it, I guess, a little mm -hmm. bit. And let's talk about, uh, you've been in the field long enough now that you've seen, you know, many years of people come in, athletes come in mm -hmm. at the college level in particular. Do you think they're coming in now better trained than they were, say, 10 years ago? I mean, are they getting, are they getting, do they have more education, more experience about strength and conditioning than 10 years ago with the advent of social media and internet and all the other sources of information out there? Or do you think they're about the same and you still have to kind of start them all at the same place? I think it depends. Oh, okay. um, that's always the, that's my favorite that's answer as a the professor. Answer. It depends. That's and, right. yeah. and so many things in, in the sports performance strength conditioning world, there's, you know, there's a lot of people who are like, there are no absolutes. And it, a lot of times it is, it depends um, on the team, on the environment that an athlete grew up in, mm -hmm. on, the the opportunities that were presented to them and so you know one of the things that we have to um sort through deal with kind of work with is is the advent of social media mm -hmm. and youtube and seeing some of the stuff that is put out there that um maybe um is great for getting likes and great for getting you know <laughs> some publicity but it's not necessarily something that we want to do or that we need to do in a, a properly periodized and progressed program that's specific to a certain team yeah. um, or even a certain athlete. So what, when we're looking at, um, you know, what's how the athletes are coming in, some have trained before um, and some have not. And so what I do is always kind of start them at the basics, really, really simple, basic movement patterns. Mm and progress based on what their individual bodies are showing me. And I, I tell all of my athletes all the time, I, I need communication to be both ways. It can't just be me telling you, telling you, telling you, telling you, because then if I don't get feedback from you, then I'm guessing a lot right. of times. Right. And we have, we have a lot of sports technologies now and stuff like that that can give more objective data, but it also, still I, down, I yeah. still need to hear from the student athletes from the coaches. And so getting that feedback and seeing um, that this is, this is a collaborative effort. Obviously I have the expertise of knowing the human body better sure. and, and seeing what the needs are um, and, and having the communication of what they've, what they have done in the past, what they're used to, what they've, what they know has worked for them. Right. And then using all of that information to create and de develop a plan that works best for those individuals. And then for the team as a unit. Because we have to, you know, in the sport, especially like basketball, we have to function as a collective unit. Mm -hmm. Some other sports right. are individual, um, individual competitors in a team setting. Um, so that that can be a little bit different. You can make a little bit like more. Like the golf team. Golf, or the tennis team. Golf, yeah. tennis, yeah. swimming, diving, track sure. and field. Yeah, and it, it strikes me that one of the biggest changes that have happened is um, training for these athletes is now year round. Mm -hmm. They're very, there is very little off season. Yeah. Um, so the women's team went to the, the final, I mean, sorry, the sweet 16 a couple weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Have they, are they back in the weight room yet? We start today at 3 PM. So there you go. So they're mm -hmm. back and they've got a two week break and then they're, they're back again. They're back. We, we have the whole team, uh, back minus, we have some that are going to go play with USA basketball, mm -hmm. um, because we're that good. And we have people playing with the USA basketball. Um, and, but other than that, we're going to have the whole team back for both summer sessions. Um, and then there's another short break in August and then we're back in action going into some preseason training and then we start back up. I mean, and that's what I hope people realize is that these athletes, you see them on TV or you see them in person for a two or three month period of time, but this is full time nowadays. It's full time year round. Full time rock and roll mm -hmm. all the time. Yeah. One of the, one of the things that you and I have talked a lot about in the past is the importance of sleep. When you, when people, when you, when people talk to you as a strength and conditioning coach, they're thinking about running them or make lifting weights and all. But one of your also big roles for your athletes is to advocate for rest, appropriate mm -hmm. rest, rest and recovery. Yeah. And that, that encompasses so many different things. And that's why as we, you know, from in the athletic department, we have a, a directive from the athletic director that um, we want 
a collective unit of professionals to meet together mm. to talk about what's going on with student athletes. It's the, the performance group. Mm -hmm. um, and so we all get together and we're talking about all the different areas. Um, so it's not just about um, lifting, running, practicing. Um, you know, it's getting into the athletic training room and getting some recovery. It's, it's what the athletes are doing. We can see them a max of four hours a day during the end season. So what are they doing the other 20 hours a day? Right. <laughs> and a lot of that is education. We have to educate them on the importance of what they're doing outside of when they're right in front of me or right, right. in front of the coaches, because that's easy to follow. Right. Exactly. It's the discipline of what are they doing outside of our training and outside of being in our facility what are they doing to make sure that they're um, benefiting themselves? And that, that becomes a personal discipline of, you know, we want to make sure that we educate them on why sleep is important. Reaction time, um, even mental clarity, mm -hmm. um, that's when their body can restore itself. And, and you know, we want to talk to them about nutrition and sleep and how we can utilize those things for proper recovery because that isn't something that's really, really talked about. It's, right. it's a kind of a hot topic in, in, in the, world, the profession right, right sure. now. Yeah. Yeah. And it does help with social media. There's a lot more, like you can push out a lot more information, but it's also, you know, we have to educate on the day to day right. and it can't just be like one presentation and then we never talk about it again. It's, you know, how are we, like, how are we impacting them on the day to day basis? And we can't forget that part of the 20 hours they're in class too. Yes. They're in class. They're, 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 they're in class, sleeping. They're, on. they're in study hall. They're, yeah. um, yeah. you know, getting to and from right. our, our training sessions and classes. And so there's, there's so much that the, the collegiate student athlete has to, um, manage mm -hmm. through. And so educating, we need to understand, I mean, we, we as professionals have to understand what their life looks like. And they also have to understand that when we're giving them this information, it's for their benefit. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's trying to help set them up for success. That's one of the things that I talk to all of the teams that I work with about all the time. It's set yourself up for success. And these are ways that you can do that. Right. And, and otherwise, it's like you're, if you don't get that sleep, you know, I don't want to say like, oh, this is going to happen to you because there's, not, there's no absolutes because right. everybody's a little bit different. Everybody's a little different, but, yeah. but it's like, hey – what you're great right now. What if you did these things and you felt that much better? It might be better. Your your right. mood and your right. like interaction with people is that much better because you've hydrated, you've gotten um, you know, you've gotten yourself fueled up, you've gotten a good night's rest. Right. You're not in sleep debt. Right. Right. How much better could you be? Right. If you did that extra step. Yeah. Yeah. Our, our time is going really quick. Yeah. And as you know, we always ask our speakers for their take-home message. What's the one oh, thing you gosh. want our viewers and listeners to take away from this podcast oh, today? Oh, man. There's so many things. I know. Uh, I need to narrow it down. You've got, you've got so many things to tell us. Uh, um, I think just going on the, the recovery path, just mm. right where we were, um, the importance of um, the, the collective whole of how, you know, it, whether it's people who are personally um, training themselves or who have interaction with other individuals who are trying to get um, a healthier lifestyle, healthier environment, or if they're um, coaching or, um, or teaching those who are trying to, um, trying to make it in the world of athletics. I think just being an educator is so huge and right. giving good sound information. Like I said earlier, there's a lot of stuff out there uh, and, there's a lot of and stuff out the there. sifting through some of the, pardon me, but garbage that's right. out there right. um, and, and making sure that, you know, you're looking at and, and educating from research based um, sound uh, and, and practical application that is actually practical and right. uh, making sure that those are the things that we're carrying on because this, this field is going to continue to grow and evolve and develop. And so as much as we can stay ahead of things and educate ourselves so that we can educate others, I think is just hugely important. Excellent. Excellent. Take home message. Yeah.
thank you for being with us today. Thank We've you. We've enjoyed having me. you back. Yeah. yeah. And thank you all for taking the time to uh, either watch or listen to us today. Uh, regular listeners and viewers will know that this is the time of the podcast when we have the podcast question of the week. Uh, and this week, the podcast question is from our producer of this segment, uh, Mr. Carlos Guevara. And the podcast question is, what what nickname did Ms. Burge use for the Texas A&M women's basketball team this season? So be the first one to send us that um, correct the correct answer to that question to Huffines at tamu.edu. And uh, we'll send you completely free one of our nifty podcast T-shirts. Yeah. Look, it's even got a QR code on the back that works. If you forget the address, you just kind of scan that with your phone and it goes straight to it. Um, so again, answer that podcast question, send us that email. Sometimes we give more than one t-shirt uh, away per week. Um, and so, uh, again, Tana, thank you for being with us. We've Thanks enjoyed, so enjoyed having you again on, on the show. Thank you. Appreciate it. And, and again, thank you all for being with us this week. Uh, no, you can always go to the Huffines Institute.org and you can find a lot of information about sports medicine and human performance, including our previous 250 some odd podcasts, a lot of text articles, a lot of other information that you can use uh, as you pursue uh, activity and health. Uh, certainly, before we get out of here, we want to thank the Omar Smith Endowment, uh, the Huffines Endowment for their support, as well our, as our producer, Carlos Guevara, um, our engineer today, Dalton Hughes, and the variety of other people that you'll see in the credits that help us get this podcast out. And so we hope that you join us next week for another interesting person in the world of sports medicine and human performance. And until then, we hope that you stay active and healthy. <laughs>